Happy New Year. It is literally the first day of the new year, and I'm so happy that you are here with us on this day, and I also welcome those uh, to Sherwood who are visiting via Facebook Live. It's wonderful to have everyone here together as one body of Christ. Uh, just a few, just little announcements. Anyone um, at the end of the service, if you would like to take home a poinsettia, please do, because we will be, again, transitioning back. Um, but feel free to take one uh, to yourself or to bring it to someone you love. Uh, also, um, a special thank you to everyone who makes it possible for this extended community beyond even the Sherwood family to celebrate Christmas on Christmas Eve and on Christmas Day. Um, all through Advent, preparations are being made. At the last minute is our tradition. We do not decorate our church until after a Advent 4. And uh, just take a look around and see all the attention to the detail that was done by the Altar Guild in particular, uh, and Wismer, um, and everyone who helped. But thank you to the readers, to our accolades, to those who um, handed out bulletins and everything else that came along with it. Uh, our music was spectacular. We even had a mini choir, which was so good, on Christmas Eve, and um, it was a joy. So um, thank you to each and every one of you. Uh, going forward, uh, just a few things. Uh, Kevin and I will be on vacation uh, in two weeks uh, for two Sundays. And um, Elizabeth, the Reverend Elizabeth Masterson and uh, the Reverend Joanne Tetrall will be here um, on one Sunday, respectively. Uh, and then the following Sunday, where I will return, Bishop Sutton will be with us, and he is doing his annual visits, uh, and this will be his farewell tour, as he shared with me to, uh, this week uh, when we talked about the preparation of his visit. So I hope that you and friends will come and bid him farewell, um, and we will have a coffee hour following with questions and answers and anything that you might have. As you know, we are in the midst of a bishop search, so he may be able to um, at least share some of that idea and the transition of what all that means, because um, he will stay uh, and be our bishop um, and sort of mentor our new bishop in an interim time, which is very good. And outside of that, uh, I commend you to the bulletin. If you have any questions, uh, please speak to me after the service. It is wonderful to have you here with us. And now let us, as we begin this new year and start afresh, let us be silent for a few moments so we can settle ourselves, remind ourselves why we are here, and hear God's word and the hymns and the scriptures and the prayers that we will recite and say today. So glad that you are with us. Thank you.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be his kingdom. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly magnify perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Eternal Father, you gave your incarnate Son the holy name of Jesus to be the sign of our salvation. Plant in every heart, we pray, the love of him who is the Savior of the world, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. The first reading is from Numbers, chapter 6 to 22 to 27. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to Aaron and his son, saying, Thus you shall bless the Israelites. You shall say to them, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. To the Lord lift up its countenance upon you and give you peace. So he, they shall put my name on the Israelites, and I will bless them. The word of the Lord. We will read Psalm 8 responsibly by whole verse. 
O Lord, our governor, has exalted it is your name in all the world. You have set up a stronghold against your adversaries to quell the enemy and the avenger. What is man that you should be mindful of him? the son of man that you should seek him out you give him majesty over the works of your hands you put all things under his feet the birds of the air the fish of the sea and whatsoever walks in the paths of the sea The second reading is from Galatians, verse 4, 4 to 7. When the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as children. And because we, and because you are children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a child. And if a child, then you are an heir through God. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. After eight days had passed, It was time to circumcise the child, and he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. The Gospel of the Lord.
Lord, our governor, how exalted is your name in all the world. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. A pastor once paid a visit to a family in his congregation that lived near the train tracks on the edge of town. As the pastor talked to the parents, their little boy played quietly in the room. And then suddenly, a huge roar tore through the living room. Every part of the pastor's body vibrated as that train passed by. The pastor, surprised by what he felt and heard, turned to the little boy and said, Wow, what was that noise? The little boy, still playing with his toys, looked up innocently and said, What noise? He had heard the train's force fill his home so many times. He just didn't hear it anymore. The train's force hadn't decreased, but the boy's attention to it had. Sometimes we hear something so often, we tune it out. Sometimes the tuning out serves as a defense mechanism, a way to manage the intrusion into our otherwise safe and contained lives. Sometimes our ability to tune things out, look the other way, ignore the obvious, comes at a cost. It makes us complacent, none, numb, and unresponsive to what is going on all around us. I dare say the same can be said when we hear such a familiar story repeatedly even a story that is the core of our Christian faith, the story of the birth of Jesus. Now, for those of us who consider ourselves faithful and abiding Christians, we may be surprised to hear this gospel reading after Christmas. Isn't this a story reserved for Christmas Eve or Christmas morning? As we stand at the beginning of a new year, why are we looking backward and not forward? I would say we are looking back, except for the one very important verse, verse 21. After eight days had passed, it was time to circumcise the child, and he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. This one verse propels us forward and is the reason today is called the holy name. It refers to the naming of Mary and Joseph's baby, the name Jesus that was given to him, not by his parents, not because of tradition, but by God's messenger, Gabriel, who came to Mary before Jesus was conceived. In other words, this is a special day that wasn't just a Jewish naming ceremony. It ushered in a new era and fulfilled God's promise to the Israelites and ultimately to the world, a promise carried out by some unsuspecting people. You know, I continue to be amazed by what is revealed in Scripture the fact that God always calls on the most unsuspecting people to be his messengers. This leaves no room for us to back away from our responsibility of living a Christ-filled life. We can't use this excuse that we're not qualified with nothing to offer nor complain that no one will listen to us. No, there is no wiggle room. After all, God chose the shepherds who were dirty, who were uneducated, who were nonconformists, and certainly non obedient Jews who followed the law closely. We all know who came before today's reading, don't we? As the young couple began to deal with the reality of a newborn baby, there were shepherds in the field tending their flock. And to their complete amazement, an angel of the Lord shone around them. 
Just imagine the scene. Shepherds out in the field, the dark sky filled with all the bright constellations. Despite all the stars lighting up the sky, they were still terrified at what they saw and heard. So much so they ventured to Bethlehem to see for themselves the Savior wrapped in bands of cloth lying in a manger. And on that night, Mary and Joseph, no doubt, were scared, alone, and miles from any family. By having visitors, even the strange shepherds, arrive to share in their wonder and awe at the birth of their beautiful child must have given them some sense of comfort. But more importantly, the strangers who came to see their child also shared what had been said to them by the heavenly angels. Hearing the shepherds' miraculous story of how they too were visited by God's angels assured the young people that they were not alone. While most were amazed about what they heard from the shepherds, it was Mary, Mary who pondered it all in their heart, her heart. This was the moment that Mar for Mary that confirmed all that she had been willingly and maybe even reluctantly agreed to do when she answered God's call. What a precious gift the shepherds gave when they shared their story to the young couple. Even more surprising, the shepherds didn't simply go back to their flocks and not say a single word to anyone. No, it is written that the shepherds return glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. These shepherds were the first messengers for Jesus, not the disciples, not Jesus' family, but the unsuspecting shepherds who couldn't keep the miraculous story silent. But then we have this pivotal verse refocusing us back onto Jesus as his parents remained obedient to Jewish law. Their baby was circumcised and named eight days after his birth. This one verse was the culmination of everything that was told in the first two chapters of Luke. This was the moment where all that was said and promised was fulfilled when Jesus was named, not by his parents, but by what Gabriel had instructed Mary and Joseph to do. Mary and Joseph took the crucial step of faithful obedience by giving him the name given to him by God. All that happened, all that happened up until then led to this precious moment of Jesus' naming. It wasn't the fact that Jesus was a special name. It certainly wasn't. What was significant was Mary's obedience, not only to Jewish law, but more importantly, to God. She demonstrated her trust in what was told to her, that she was carrying the Christ child, who was a gift from God to those who lived in the cold and dark world. He was the Messiah, the mighty counselor, the prince of peace. Think about the obedience of all the players in the birth narrative. If it weren't for their trust in what had been told to them and their obedience to follow through, where would we be today? Their actions weren't done because they were modeling actions of those who came before them. They didn't act because they knew the rest of the story. They were the story. Yet these unsuspecting people responded to God's call, to God's call to carry out the sacred story so that Jesus could be God's living example of what it means to live in and create a heavenly kingdom right here on earth. And so I ask you, which I often do, how do the actions and obedience of those first followers of Christ compare to your faith 
and your obedience, my faith and my obedience. We have the whole story. We know how it ends. We know about Jesus' ministry, his death, his resurrection, his ascension, and all the background knowledge. How do we fare in comparison to those who came before us? Do our actions equal their full faith and trust in God? Or are we weak examples of their devotion and expression of duty towards Jesus? You know, as we look towards this new year, a date and time that marks a new beginning, let us reflect on our role in the miracle of God's gift to the world. How are we going to be as obedient as Mary? To have the belief that God is actually beckoning us forward to be his faithful messengers out in the world, us, we're normal, we're nothing, but yes, God is beckoning us forward. And for us to have the belief that God is with us and to live without reserve and to trust him and others and to take the scriptures that we know so well or we think we know so well and ponder them in our heart as Mary did and then go out like the shepherds who felt compelled. Not because they had to. They were just moved to go out and share what they witnessed. Ordinary people who didn't question their own position in life, but trusted the main angel's message. They trusted in God. To be obedient to God's crazy call that has given to all is given to all the world our salvation that was wrapped in bands of cloth found lying in the manger our promise for an everlasting life a promise that no matter who we are from where we come or the missteps we have made or may even make in the future we are loved loved unconditionally just as Mary and Joseph and the shepherds were. And through Mary's obedience, the word made flesh became real. Let us not tune out this sacred message as the boy was able to do when the train vibrated through his home. Instead, let us share our faith with others, even if we think we don't have the right words or believe we are as capable as Mary. Let us not break the long succession of obedient followers who brought forward God's promise of love, hope, mercy, and justice. Because if we do, what will become of the world? As we gather as a faith community, may we be strengthened by one another. May our obedience here in the moment carry the sacred message to new ears and hearts. And in doing so, may we believe the pro blessing promised to the Israelites, Mary and all who came before us. May we believe it is our blessing too that will take us into the new year. The blessing we heard in the book of Numbers. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Happy New Year. Amen. And as we are able to recite the Nicene Creed, as found on page six of your bulletin. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, 
eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. prayers of the people. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church, that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name be glorified in all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your words and we pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find greater in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. Be delivered from the distress. Give us the departed, give to the departed eternal rest, that light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and for those of others. Hasten, O oh Father, the, glory, the coming of your kingdom and grant that we, your servants, who now live by faith, may with joy behold your Son at his coming in glorious majesty, even Jesus Christ, our own mediator and advocate. Amen. neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen him in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. My sisters and brothers, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us greet one another in peace as well as our friends visiting on Facebook Live. You may be seated. It's 
good to have everyone here. I know one person slept through my entire sermon, and that is Cody, the dog, who is our wonderful follower <laughs> and, and passionate, calm presence here. And I'm glad that I calmed him enough so he could sleep. <gasps> Sorry, Cody. <laughs> And now, my sisters and brothers, let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because you gave Jesus Christ, your only Son, to be born for us, who by the mighty power of the Holy Spirit was made perfect man of the flesh of the Virgin Mary, his mother, so that we might be delivered from the bondage of sin and receive power to become your children. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn, we proclaim the glory of your name. 
Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread, and this wine. We pray, you gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. And in the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where, with all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
post-communion prayer as found on page 11 of your bulletin. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. As we go forth into the world refreshed and renewed, we reaffirm our commitment to our mission as a congregation saying together, God commands us to enthusiastically cast open our doors to embrace all, impacting lives through bold service, no exceptions. Alleluia, alleluia, let us go forth to love and serve the Lord. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Happy New Year. <laughs> Thank you.